Okay, let's talk jobs. At first, I mean at the very start of my filmmaking way, I was very curious, as a former white collar, why nobody was really interested or wanted my CV, and those stupid recommendation letters as well. Now I could tell you, if some production asks you to send a CV their way to apply for a gig, either they are amateurs or production manager is. So how in the world do people get to that freaking industry? Okay, so no CVs, no previous jobs lists, no recommendation letters. Obviously, what does this letter should look like from a gig you spend a single day at? Heads of departments will probably have reels, productions will... get away with just references and maybe IMDb credits, but seriously, nobody looks there. I'd worked closely together with excellent grips and electricians that has no online and social media presence. Real old school stuff. The only way to get to know them is meet on set or get contacts by word of mouth from another crew member. Truly valuable contacts will be carefully passed on from one to another. And you gonna deserve it. Cause let's say I wouldn't want my favorite genies to be busy when I need them on my gig. But there's also another catch. When I'm offered a job on days that are already booked and they inquire for reference, I will never suggest anybody who, who would be professionally stronger than me. I'm not a moron, right? Obviously, the client won't ever return to me and in the future will offer jobs to that person at first place. Thus, we run into a dilemma. On the one hand, the only way to get worthy contacts is to ask for recommendations. On the other hand, the only way to get to know really good peeps is to work with them on set. That's one of those regular catch-22 type of things. We have a lot in the industry. Like to get in a unit you have to work on union sets, but to get to union sets, you gotta be in a union. Go figure, pal. Okay, yes, there are permits, but to get one, a union member has to put a word for you. There are a great many online film resources, such as Staff Me Up, Production Hub, various sections of Mandy and Indeed dedicated to film jobs, and many, many more questionable paid and free, well, usually paid, self-declared networks that you could Google yourself, as well as numerous Facebook groups, global and local. But keep in mind, it's a real deal to find a good offer for decent trade on a public resource like that. Best job offers are always personal. I don't feel like I can express my real attitude to these networks, as on one hand, there's almost never a good job with a market rate, on the other hand, that's where I've also started. And yes, my first grip and electric gigs were between $100-$150 per 12 hours. Student projects are a good starter as well. Just don't stay there for too long. Talking about students, inevitably we arrive at a film school's topic. And the most popular question here, is it even necessary to graduate from a film school? Hey Naifa! How you doing? And the answer is no, but it really helps. If you feel lazy to do your best, learn yourself and work your way from the very bottoms, film school is a convenient way around. Many people say, go better buy yourself gear for the money and start working. Well, yeah. 
Easy to say, go do something when you already know everything. Also, intuitive learning is not the best way to learn really complicated things. But of course, totally doable, not a rocket science at all. Especially in the industry where practical knowledge is more important than theoretical. Another advantage, a good school gives you valuable contacts. Its producers, directors and DPs will probably be your first crew. Paying for learning is no-brainer. How about earning on filmmaking? When talking about rates, location should be considered. For supply and demand reasons, the higher the supply, the lower will be rates. From that perspective, Los Angeles is probably one of the worst. Although the demand is high, but offer is so crazy, oversaturated that everyone knows. There's always someone ready to do the job almost for free. Other than that, anything is possible. And a good rate is the one that was negotiated. To sum up all that was said, try to get on any set even possible and make friends with key people that might want to keep your contacts. Remember. Even the shittiest set might have at least a couple of crew members to learn from or who will hire you in the future for a full rate. You never know, film industry is a pretty damn small family. It's never enough and never at first place just to be a great professional, it goes without saying. But when you have to be spending more than half of a day in one space, sometimes closed and distant, day after day, you're looking for a great personality at first place. These people get best job offers and surely will stay busy even during low seasons.